we are doing questions on physical quantities and measurement and this is uh, this they were actually two separate chapters till last year they merged it and they made a single chapter and uh, from this year i'm starting with vectors the diagram shows two vectors x and y and he wants us to find the vector z z is not given to us so i should work somehow on z so if I make Z the subject, it will be Z is equal to Y minus X. Z is equal to Y plus minus X. This is the working I have shown because uh, we have head to tail method. We have head to tail. Now what this equation says, plus means Reverse it. Minus means reverse it. So reverse x. Y plus minus x. So I, I have y in my position. I have y. Now you have to flip. You have to flip x and put it on y. It's head to tail. Negative sign means you have to flip the vector. So look at the diagram. I'm flipping x and I'm joining it here. Look, this is the this is x, negative x. This is minus x. The resultant vector will be the final vector. So here come, here come the resultant vector. This is the resultant vector which comes always head to head. When you're adding vectors, they are head to tail and the resultant vector comes, the resultant vector come head to head. This is Z. I have shown all the working. I have shown all the working and now you people can select which is the suitable answer. The people who have just joined, for them, it is uh, a class on physical quantities and measurement. Uh, the main topics in these two chapters are vectors, base units, and uncertainty. These are the main topics in this chapter. Now look at the direction of Z and the arrow of the Z. Look at the direction of Z after a proper working. Look at the arrow and the direction. So what should be the answer? Okay, one student got A. Other people should take part, copy this solution. A. Which two units are not equivalent to each other? So work out every one of them. Newton meter, open Newton meter. It's matching. <clears throat> the first option is not right <clears throat> because he says not. Newton second into kg ms minus one solve Newton second.
it's also matching. I have solved this one. I have solved this one. Now see the part C, joule per second. Solve it, simplify it. Newton meter is kg m square s minus 2. Okay, you say C is the answer. Okay, find one solution. If I simplify it, I get kg m square S minus three. Pascal and kg ms minus two. Pascal means what? If you solve Pascal, Pascal is Newton per meter square. So it will be kg ms minus two into meter minus two. Meter minus two and second is C is also matching. Now only last hope D is left. If I simplify D, you need to work with me kg m minus one s minus two. B is not matching. So look the working. D is the answer. So you have to match the answer. Look at this question and you have to read the question. The light meter measures the intensity of the light falling on it. Theory suggests that I intensity varies inversely as the square of the distance D. This is an inverse proportionality. And uh, look at these options. If you people remember the main sketches, a directly proportional is a straight line. 
passing through the origin and inverse proportionality is a curve. Inverse proportionality is a curve. But remember, inverse proportionality, inverse proportionality shape. It's a standard shape to learn. This graph does not touch x-axis, does not touch y-axis. A very important point to remember. It's a memory question. So, yes, some people got it right. Uh, other people should also contribute that what answer should be there. Now, remember, this graph cannot touch x-axis inverse proportionality graph. And it cannot touch y-axis. C and D are out of question because they are straight line. Read the notes and then answer for me what is answer A or B. <coughs> Hmm, right. Some people are still, some people are still thinking of A, even though I have pointed out, look, I have pointed out three times, inverse proportionality curve, I repeat my words, inverse proportionality is a curve, it is never a straight line, and it never touches x-axis or y-axis. Unfortunately, some people are still saying A. They should see that how A can be the answer when it is touching the y-axis. It's very close. Actually, it's a printing issue. I got it now. Why people are getting confused? I'm sorry. Actually, it's a printing issue. Some people are getting A and B confusion because uh, the graph is slightly over-leading. C and D cannot be the answer. 
C and D cannot be the answer because they are straight lines. I got it now why people are getting this problem. Actually, the graph is uh, the A and B people are getting confused. Now, straight line option, straight line option want to clear from linear log. I got the issue what people are facing. Actually, A is touching y-axis. A is touching y-axis and B is touching B is touching x-axis. So that is why A and B cannot be the answer. Now, why some people are thinking of D? It is 1 upon D square. It's a linear law function. Hmm, bilkul. I got it. Uh, I didn't see it closely. Achha, uh, a and B are not possible because uh, inverse proportionality is a curve and it never touches any axis. So A and B are rejected. Now, this is a technical issue about 1 upon d square. 1 upon d square can be a straight line. Now, how this is possible, i is proportional to 1 upon d square. i is equal to k upon d square. So, if you plot it using the linear law concept, This is called linear law. You people will learn more when you people will do paper three questions. Now, this is one upon d square and one upon d square. One upon d square is on x axis. If this is the case, then d is the right answer because it's a linear law application. Linear law means that uh, I think I should explain it in the class then if uh, everyone doesn't know about it. Uh, it's a paper, uh, you will you will study it in paper three also and some people have done it in admas. Uh, but remind me in the class, I will explain there that any curve can be converted into a straight line if it is plotted according to linear law. The diameter of a cylindrical diameter of a cylindrical metal rod is measured using a micrometer screw gauge. The diagram below shows an enlargement of the scale on the micrometer screw gauge when taking the measurement. What is the cross-sectional area of the rod? He is measuring the diameter. So first get the diameter. Then we will talk about area, but first read this meter. It is 
Now, solve this calculation. Do this calculation and let me know. Four point four one, but it's not matching with anything. It's a formula, Ima. I explained this in the class. The original formula is pi r square. And the formula normally used in A level is pi d square upon 4. Second, someone is saying 30. Can you please people check the answer? Uh, some people gave me answer 11.4. It is matching. Other people should also uh, give their feedback. In an experiment, a radio-controlled car takes 2.5 plus minus 0 0.05 second to travel this much. So they have given us time. They have given us the distance. What is the car average speed and the uncertainty in this value? Let's write the formula. Velocity is equal to distance upon time. Distance is 40 and the time is 2.5. Please help to calculate 40 upon How much is 40 upon 2.5? Sixteen. Thank you. So this is something I, I had explained in my class that you have to write the formula.
copy this working and solve it. I'm just coming. Uh, copy this working. I'm just restarting in just like one or two minutes. Solve it. Uh, 